guys, Nubasaurus here with another Minecraft invention. Uh, this one is a little bit more complex than my last invention. Uh, its real-life counterpart would be known as an integrator. And if you don't know what an integrator is, it basically shows a linear relationship between the input and the output over time. And uh, how it does that is basically, as if the input is greater than zero volts, the output will slowly creep towards saturation and depending on how much input voltage is applied depends on how uh, fast or it will vary how fast it will creep towards the saturation level. Uh, if a negative voltage however is applied uh, again depending on how strong that negative voltage is it will slowly creep towards cutoff and how did I build this in Minecraft when there's no such thing as negative and positive you know, power levels? Well, that actually is pretty simple. This input chart will help explain it a little bit. Basically, where that cobblestone is, that's zero. And where that other cobblestone is, that's 15. Well, in AC, if you were to bias the signal, that would be considered negative 8 and positive 8. These other cobblestone over here is considered negative 1 and positive 1. Well, oop, that was weird. <laughs> Well, what that does then is it activates this circuit here, which is basically just a uh, sort of a charge and discharge, almost like a capacitor circuit. But it's it it's a charge and discharge uh, speed varies based on what's given at the input. Um, so the input varies the charging speed, and that's shown on the output here in a signal strength of zero to fifteen. So to show you that working. I can apply this signal strength of 7, is it? Yeah. Well, the integrator won't see that as 7. That actually sees that as a negative 1, so no change is applied. Uh, but if I were to turn this one on, this will be a signal strength of 8, which the integrator actually sees as a signal strength of positive 1. And it'll slowly creep up to saturation in increments of 1. As you can see, indicated by the lights over there. Well, if I were to turn that off, the signal is now negative 1, and it'll slowly discharge at a speed of 1 block per tick, or whatever. <laughs> uh, and obviously, the speed can be adjusted based on the input level. So if I were to give it a signal strength of negative 3 and positive 3, it now will creep up in increments of 3. And again, if it's negative 3, it'll discharge at increments of 3. And this can obviously be you know, put in different combinations, so I can have an increased uh, rate of 1 and a decreased rate of 3, as indicated by the levers. Or I can just go to flat out positive and negative saturation and go pos uh, charge with a signal strength of 8 and discharge with a signal strength of negative 8, which is of course 0 as you can see here, pretty much turns on and off almost instantly. But it is a linear relationship and it does show it over time. So, what are the practical applications of the circuit? Well, if you remember my Schmidt trigger, which is in those unloaded chunks over there, um, you can take a varying level input and turn it into a, you know, a binary output. Or an, either it's on, positive saturation, or off, cutoff, you know? Well, if you take the integrator and you tie its output to the input of the Schmidt trigger, you can actually create two different waves at once, uh, as indicated by this circuit here. So the output of the Schmidt trigger is actually creating a square wave. It's either all on or it's all off, positive 15 or none at all. Whereas the output of the integrator, because its input is constantly changing, will always give you a uh, triangle wave. So why is it going up and down in increments of one wall. A small circuit that I built over here called an attenuator is, is keeping the positive and negative saturations at positive and negative one instead of positive eight and negative eight. So that's not really all too exciting, is it? I mean, you've seen way simpler triangle wave generators before. I mean, this is just 
unnecessarily large. Well, there is one more application to the integrator that you can uh, use in this instance. So what happens is when a square wave is presented at the input of an integrator, a linear wave is presented at the output, or a triangle. Well, what happens if you take a triangle wave and put it at the input of an integrator? The result is actually logarithmic, and it's what is known in the electronic world as a sine wave. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give to you the first sine wave ever produced in Minecraft. As soon as the chunks load. <laughs> You heard me right. This is the first ever sine wave ever produced by redstone and nothing but redstone in Minecraft. And I know there's a few pixel glitches, but bear with me. This is a sine wave. <laughs> so if you can see somewhat clearly, the rise and fall slopes aren't exactly linear. They are rounded, if you will. That's because as the input level varies from uh, of this integrator, its charge and discharge speed is being changed constantly. So even though the wave is lagged by about 90 degrees, uh, it is in fact logarithmic, and it is in fact a sine wave. So if you need more proof, just uh, take a look at this. So as you can see here, uh, in this first slide, this is actually that same oscilloscope hooked up to the Schmidt trigger output, you can clearly see that the wave is in fact a square wave. Now, minus the glitched out pixels obviously, um, if you took the edge of each light and drew a line between each one, which is what I did, you can see this is pretty damn close to a square wave. Uh, I ran the calculations, it's actually got a duty cycle of about 57-58%, so it's pretty close to a 50% duty cycle square wave. Um, the fact that it's it's got a, its duty cycles a little bit off might have something to do with the charge and discharge time ratio of the first integrator. But uh, uh, anyway, yeah, as you can see though, this is this this next slide is the output of the uh, first integrator. This is the triangle wave, and as you can see, uh, despite the first couple pixels at the beginning there, uh, it is clearly a triangle wave as indicated by the red line once again. Um, but now this is the moment of truth, this is the all-time proof. What you see here is in fact a sine wave being produced in Minecraft. Um, you can clearly see, indicated by the red line, that the curves are in fact logarithmic. The rising slope is a little bit faster than the falling slope. Again, that might have something to do with the, uh, the duty cycle of the square wave. But it is as close to a sine wave as anyone has ever gotten know produced with with redstone this isn't produced with with mine carts on a on a mine uh, on a track or anything like that and it's not produced um, you know to look like a sine wave when in fact it's actually just a triangle wave in disguise no this is not actually a sine wave produced with redstone and uh, what are the practical applications for that I don't know but you know what I got bragging rights because I am the first person to actually do this so in your face. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to download the schematic for this circuit, you can go ahead and look in the description. I'll probably have that up fairly soon. And uh, other than that, I'll be seeing you guys later.